everyone, Leticia here with Made with Love by Glamo, where everything here is made with love by me, Glamo. <laughs> Today's tutorial is going to be on a ruffly wrist warmer, and I call it Glamo's Ruffly Wrist Warmer. I call everything Glamo's this, Glamo's that. <laughs> Why? Because I'm Glamo. <laughs> Today it's going to be about this wrist warmer right here. I really like it. I call it a wrist warmer slash coat cuff because I just love how it it's kind of like the cuff of your coat and isn't that really pretty and elegant and classy? I think so. So anyway, this is a uh, the reason why I made this in brown is because I had an Etsy order come in December 15th. I believe that's Saturday. And um so I went ahead and made the first one this morning and as I was making it I thought hey wait a minute I've had some requests for this particular wrist warmer um let me make the second one on camera so I can make a tutorial finally that everyone's been asking for um the one that's pictured that they actually purchased um this is what they looked at when they purchased it was this gold um one and they not only ordered the wrist warmer but they also ordered the boot cuff um and it shows the date right there december 15th <laughs> so they ordered that from my etsy shop and so i went out and got some brown yarn and i got karen simply soft because i just love 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 karen simply soft and the color is i hope it comes out it's chocolate i really love look at how pretty and rich that brown is it's gorgeous so this is what it looks like on. Let me show you what it looks like off. It's really cute. Okay, here's what it looks like off. See how simple and easy it's going to be? It's so super easy. I don't even know if I want to give you my pattern because it's so gorgeous. <laughs> but I'll share it with y'all. I won't be greedy. I'll share Glamour's Roughly Wrist Warmer with y'all. So this is what we'll be making. And um, after I'm done making this tutorial, I have to make the boot cuffs for her too. It's going to Santa Rosa, California, I believe. Um, so I thought I would make the first boot cuff off camera and then when I get ready to do the second one, I'll turn the camera back on and make a second tutorial for y'all for the boot cuff. So that way you can make a matching set if you wanna give it as a gift or keep it for yourself. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we'll be doing today. If this um, tutorial interests you, stay tuned and uh, We'll be making this shortly. If you like the tutorial, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you don't have to give me a thumbs up. Thumbs out, thumbs down, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> Why be negative, right? <laughs> so anyway, I hope you do enjoy this tutorial. What you'll, what you'll be needing is um, some yarn, preferably Karen Simply Soft, because it is so soft, and, and you'll need a hook. I used a J hook and an I hook. I'm gonna be needing a needle for my second one to sew in the tails. And what else? Oh, a row counter. I use a row counter all the time. And a needle threader. <laughs> Cause these eyes don't see as sharply as they used to. Getting old. <laughs> all right guys, stay tuned and go get your stuff. Let's get started. Okay, I'm back guys. And I'm sure you went and got all your supplies, your yarn, your hooks and everything. Um, and as you know, if you're a uh, subscriber or a regular viewer, then you know that I normally tell you the name of the nail polish color at the top of the video. Um, so today I'm just keeping it simple because I'm letting my nails breathe. So I just put a little bit of glitter and clear on. Um, a, a viewer about a month ago um, left a comment, kind of a smart aleck comment, and said, excuse me, but why do I need to know the name of your nail color? <laughs> And I thought, well, God, that was kind of rude. Um, so I guess my answer to that is you don't need to know. It's not necessary for you to know. It's just that um, when I watch people's tutorials and I'm looking at their hands the whole time, sometimes I wonder what nail polish color they're wearing so I can go out and get it. So when I started making tutorials of my own, I, uh, I thought, you know, that's what I'll do. Since I'm a girly girl, I'll... Um, not only make tutorials, but since I used to be a nail technician, I can also give little tips and, and stuff about nail color and um, just tips in general about your nails. Um, so anyway, <laughs> to that viewer, I'm sorry. If you don't like knowing the nail color of the day, then you can just fast forward or not watch the tutorial. <laughs> Besides, I can put anything on my channel. And why? Because it's Glamma's channel. <laughs> so anyway, this is the glitter that I'm using. It's just um, 
I think a wet and wild shine from Walmart so if you're interested that's all I did and before I put nail polish on though um, any of y'all who are like 40 years and above you'll I mean well I hope it's not just me but <laughs> as you get older you start getting ridges in your nails and um, or if you well if you wear nail polish too often your nails start to get yellow so what I do is I buff my nails very gently and I kind of get the little yellow off and I it, and at the same time that gets the ridges off and uh, after you do that um, I use a cuticle oil and this is from um, this is from Sally's and it's called California mango and it smells heavenly I wish I I wish this was a smelling camera but it's so heavenly and I just dab a little bit at the top of the cuticles and rub it in and then I start my, my little manicure <laughs> so anyway now let's get started <laughs> okay so here's my J hook that we're gonna start off with and then later you might want to switch to an I hook and the reason I start with a bigger hook is because um, this part is it makes it more stretchy. If you start with a smaller one, it might be hard to you know to get it up to your forearm, especially since we're all different sizes. So okay, let me get started. If I pause periodically, it's because I'm looking at my notes. Um, here are my notes for Glamour's Roughly Wrist Warmer. So if I pause, I'm looking at my notes and stuff. I'm actually since my notes aren't very professional. I don't really know how to do them professionally as a crocheter, but I'm still thinking of um, making a pattern in my layman's crochet talk for any of y'all who uh, don't like tutorials and would rather have your own pattern. I'm thinking of writing a pattern for it and selling it in my Etsy shop, so it might be there soon. So, okay, let's get started with a slip knot. Everybody knows how to make a slip knot, and if not, go to lesson one on my channel. I have lesson one of six, and once you've got your uh, slip knot, <clears throat> very loosely chain 25. Two, three, four, and the reason I say 25 is for at least for me, for the way I crochet the 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 tension that I use, you want about a seven or a seven and a half inch. Um, wrist area because that's the average size but if you if you need a smaller or a bigger um, wrist area then just keep measuring it on yourself or the person you're making it for one two three four wait, what one two three four yeah five six seven eight nine ten and just continue until you've got 25 or whatever size that you're making it for for you Okay, so I have my 25 and now we're going to um, join the chain. So be sure not to um, get your chain twisted and you're going to join at the very first chain. And I know most of y'all know how to do that, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically just slip stitch that. Wait, hold on a second. Make sure I got it in the right one. And there's your joined um, little wrist part. And I'm going to kind of stitch my little tail in so I don't have to do it later. And um, I don't like to see a seam at the uh, at any part of anything. So I just, because a lot of times your seam starts off straight and then little by little it starts to curve. And I just don't want to deal with that. So I do everything in the spiral. Um, oh, I need to cut the little tail off right there. Um, so the only place you can, whoops, I just moved the camera, sorry. The only place you can really tell that I uh, do it, that I start in a spiral is like at the very beginning right here. And yet it's not even very noticeable at all. So what I normally do to get started in a spiral is um, I'll do a... I'll do a, uh, here I can't see what I'm doing. I know this is a hard color to see guys, but um, because the customer ordered a, uh, a brown I, and I wanna just kill two birds with one stone and make the tutorial and this at the same time, but I'll try to get it as close as I can so you can see it. Um, so anyway, what I like to do is I like to do a slip stitch for the very first stitch 
and then I put a stitch marker there. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you'll also need a little piece of yarn in a different color than what you're, you're crocheting with or a stitch marker. So then I do that, I make a, a slip stitch and then on the next one, I do a single crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to do what I call GHDC glamour's half double crochet because I don't know what else to call it so it so that I can differentiate what I'm doing I just named it GHDC um, because it's not really a half double crochet and it's not really a double crochet it's kind of in between there it's one step more than a half double crochet and it's one step less than a double crochet so this is what I'm talking about you yarn over and I'm sure I didn't invent this stitch but I'm just I call it Glamo's half double crochet on my notes just because that way I know not to do a half double and not to do a double but to do it this way and this is how I differentiate it for myself in my notes so anyway yarn over go into the stitch pull it through and the reason I go all the way up when I know I'm going through that one is because I want the stitches loose so I want I want the yarn on the fatter part of the hook if I were to keep it here my stitches would get really small and tight so I go through even though I'm going to pull it through this one as well then I'm going to yarn over a second time and go through the last two if you don't like this stitch if it's too much trouble or whatever if you don't like it then just do a half double crochet or do a double crochet whatever you're happy with but this is the look that you get if you do um, the stitch that I'm talking about I don't know what it's called <laughs> if someone knows what it's called let me know but and when you get back to this side wait for me and if you've never worked in the spiral I'll show you what I'm gonna do oh I'm back before I got to the end because I forgot to tell you that whoops I just hit the camera again what is wrong with me um, after I did the initial chain and joined it I went from the J hook to the I hook so now I'm using the I hook so if y'all want to switch go ahead if you don't if you want to if you want it kind of looser and bigger then just stick with your J hook but anyway I thought I'd let you know this is the part where I switched from a J to an I and then meet me back here when you get to your yarn or your stitch marker okay so I'm at the end of my row my first row and make sure that you have 25 stitches still the 25 that you chained make sure you still have 25 stitches and so now since we're working in the spiral I'm not going to join with a slip stitch and chain up what I'm going to do is go right into that stitch where we either had our yarn stitch marker or our stitch marker I'm going to go whoops I got a yarn over first yarn over and go right into there and just continue and that's working in a spiral for any of you beginners now that you've done that go ahead and move your stitch marker whether it's a piece of yarn or an actual stitch marker and put it on the stitch you just made okay so that we know that that's where we began okay so do this um, actually let me show you um, we're going to do something differently now um, than we did on the first row we're going to actually um, work in the front loops of the V only okay only the front V let's see if I can get it on camera for any of you who are beginners just go see, see the two sides of the V we're only going to go into the front one let's see if I can get it see it to get it to show there's the back there's the front we're only going through the front part of the V and continuing we went through one going through the second loop yarn over and go through the last two loops okay so let's try it one more time you see the V we're gonna go through the front part of the V only oops sorry my phone just buzzed I must have an email and go through the one loop go through the second loop and now yarn over and go through the last two loops do this for um for 13 rows okay um, and then when you get to this stitch like we did just now go into it do your stitch and then move it from there up to up to that next row and then do your clicker so now that we 
are done with row one, I forgot to do my clicker and it's row two now. So don't forget to do your clicker because we're going to do 13 rows and then we're going to meet each other back here. All right. Bye. Okay, so I'm at my 13th row. And now what we're going to do on row 14, let me make sure I do my clicker. Yeah, I did already. Okay, so now what we're going to do <clears throat> is make three of the same stitches that we've been doing. Make sure I stay in camera. There's one. There's two. And three. And now what we're going to do is two stitches in one. one and there's whoops don't do that there's the second one in that same stitch yeah, if I can it's hard to look through the camera and, and crochet okay let me try this again because <clears throat> my little threads are coming apart okay there we go and there's the second one and then you're gonna do three <clears throat> three single ones three single G H D C's <laughs> I'm not sure what to call them so I'm just calling them glamorous half double crochets there was one there was two there's three and now here <clears throat> we're gonna put two stitches in one And we're going to follow that sequence all the way around till you get to the marker. Okay, so meet me back here at the stitch before the marker, okay? Alrighty, so do that all the way around and I'll meet you back here. So we're going to do four. One. Okay, and don't forget your clicker. Okay, oops, darn it. Oh yeah, there it is. Move your marker from the bottom row to the top row. Okay, so that's one. Two. Three. Four, and now our increased stitch. Right back into that same stitch. Okay, so follow that pattern now. Do four, and then do your increased stitch, and then four, and then your increased stitch. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my 15th row, and I'm ready for my stitch increase I think let me see there's my increase and there's one two three four and the next one is an increase stitch right back in the same stitch <clears throat> one regular one And now we are going to be on row 16. So for row 16, go ahead and make another regular one. That'll count as one of row 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and move our marker. And do your row counter. Now I'm on 16. 
and that's stitch number one on row 16 stitch number two Come on, it's hard to, the only thing about this Simply Karen is that the threads, you know, are kind of hard to catch all of them on the hook sometimes. So that's two, three, four, and this time we're going to do five before we make our increase stitch. And one, two, three, four, five. And so this one, I have to put another stitch into that one. So follow that sequence of <clears throat> five regular um, stitches and then two in the next one, okay? So that's going to be our third increase row. And you can probably see already how it's starting it's starting to flare out. You see that? It's starting to go out like that. Let me see if I can zoom out more. Nope, that's all. Okay, but anyway, you can kind of see this was our 13th row and it's and so it was still real nice and skinny and here it's starting to flare out and that's that cool, elegant look that I like. Okay, so do that. Do five regular stitches and then an increased stitch. Five regular and then an increased and meet me back here. Okay, so I am finished with row 16. This was our five regulars and then an increase stitch row, remember? So right here is my increase stitch. And let me see that right there. And then I made one, two, three, four, five. And now what we're going to do, or what I did anyway, because I'm close to my stitch marker, is now I'm gonna go down to a single crochet Oops, darn it, lost my threads. Okay, so what did I say? Go to a single crochet, that's right. And then go down to a slip stitch. And then right here is going to be our very first, um, actually I'm gonna make this the very first stitch of the last row or what I could do yeah I think I'll do this I think I'll make one more slip stitch I'm not sure what I did on the last one but slip stitches don't matter okay so right there just so that we can make it nice and straight so we go from tall stitch down to a nice smooth edge so this is what the flaring out part looks like so far isn't that cute I think so <laughs> So there we are. We're at the stitch marker. We don't really need it anymore. Um, so now what I want you to do is chain up three. One, two, and three. And this is what gives you the ruffly look. And then go into the next stitch. But this time when we go into the next stitch, we're going to grab both sides of the V, not just the front loops. Okay, we're going to grab both front and back loops and make a single crochet. When you make that single crochet, kind of tighten down on it so that the so that the roughly kind of goes down nice and sharp in there. Now chain up three. One, two, three. And in the next stitch, grab both parts of the V and make a single crochet. Okay, so just do that all the way around. One, two, three, and then single crochet into that one. And then continue on till you'll see where um, where you started off there. So you don't really need your stitch marker. Um, so when you get here, I will be back. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial of Glamois roughly wrist warmers. I'm wearing them because I'm gonna have to send them away now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send them to my customer. I'm gonna have to. Um, wrap them up and get a label and ship them and here's my princess Kylie she's having a bad hair day though mm, aren't you so cute do you have to give mama a kiss all right guys anyway i'll see you for the next tutorial which is going to be glamour's roughly boot cuffs okay bye hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for visiting made with love by glamour where everything here is made and taught with love by me glamour and kylie and 
Paris is back there too. <laughs> All right, guys, bye.